Hello, this is the Silver Watchman, and welcome back to Rust Bucket. It is currently the finale of Rust Bucket. Now, in this series, we've covered trials, specifically the trials of Abraham. Uh, breaking it down and kind of going through the through it all, and where we left off was. Uh, Genesis chapter 20. Now, chapter 7, uh, chapter 20, verse 7. King James Version of the Bible was the last place we actually made a note. And we're going to continue on. And see the result after Sarah got pregnant. So after Sarah got pregnant, we are now in the next chapter, Genesis 21, starting off at verse 2. King James Version of the Bible. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him. I just got an email. Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now, we're gonna actually going to make a note there. It is. Oh, good, my machine. Uh, the PDA has very graciously uh, frozen. Uh, that's what I get for having an old machine, but. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, it froze pretty well. Oh no. Hold on. Mm. Now I am back to where I was. Hold on. No, 27. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, there we go. Can I bring me back to the chapter. Yes. Eight days old. There we are. Now I can make the note. All right, it um, it froze again. Okay, we're not gonna make a note there because apparently the PDA cannot take it. I may have to update this thing, or at the very least, update the tech, which I personally do not want to do. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be an interesting next series, but that's not for right now. Sorry, I'm uh, looking at some of my other notes. Um, we just gotta go back. And this time, not mess everything up. Okay, so the next verse after that is, is, And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God had made me laugh. 
to that all that here will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah, the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Therefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight, because of, the, because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. And in all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now that's an interesting thing there. That is, we're gonna make a, we're gonna highlight that with a nice, beautiful pink. Because it sticks out. It sticks out like a sore thumb. God recognizes the son born between Abraham and his wife Sarah, but does not recognize the son born between Abraham and his bondwoman Hagar why because Hagar generations and kings coming from a line from a bondwoman that is already fertile And I'm going to assume in her prime age, let's say around late 20s, mid 30s, since that's a prime age for a woman to give birth. Judging by uh, human anatomy and all the things like that. And it's not so much of a miracle and not something that people can really say, wow, God has done something truly amazing. <clears throat> Instead, God recognizes the child born between Abraham and Sarah because of the simple fact that it's more along the lines of what God had intended. Though God didn't intend Abraham to impregnate Hagar. That doesn't mean he didn't account for it. This is God we're talking about here. God is a being that has accounted even, even for some of the most minute and seemingly nonsensical things that don't really seem to matter. And yet,
there's no doubt in my mind and that that is why God tells Abraham not to be grievous in getting rid of his other son. Because that son won't bring much much joyous praise to God as as a son born of a miracle. Because let's keep in mind, if Sarah was around, let's say, let's see if um, I remember correctly, she was, she had to be in her late 90s. And it just, it clearly says, this is why we, we highlighted Abraham was a hundred years old. Just a couple of verses earlier. Because a hundred years old is a really, really late age. To have kids. To be, you know, the father of a nation. And Sarah, being at around 90, women normally lose their ability to have children, naturally, after around the age of 50. But let's, let's look it up. And it is something known as menopause. Oh, gosh. I am not mentally prepared for this, but let's do this. Huh. Oh, it's giving me a hard time typing. You know what? Let me just, real quick. Oh, wait. Because every now and again, especially with old machines, they, um don't function as well as they used to. But if my memory is correct, women hit menopause between the ages of 45 and 60. That is if my medical knowledge is correct. It may not be, but it may be. Nevertheless. Here it is. When do women... Oh. Oh my gosh. This is a preferred, perverted society. Um, when do women hit... Oh, I've been mispronouncing it my entire life. I've been pronouncing it meadow when it's meno. Now, that may not sound like a big difference to you, but I was pronouncing it with a T. Not an N, but a T. True to form. Uh, yeah, there's two ways. To hit, <laughs> there's two ways to look at it. Their prime and menopause. But normally, women hit their prime between the ages of 25 and 35. Huh. Aha. Aha. I was actually wrong on where it actually uh, <laughs> it starts. Um. No need to freak out, people, but menopause hits as early as the 30s. Meaning that... Um... 
Yeah. That's a thing. And it's, or it could happen as late as their 60s. And that's pretty much the same, like, you know, age range that I just gave. Ages, between ages 45 and 60, or they're 55. It's within the age range that I gave. So, keep in mind, Sarah was in her 90s. Meaning that she was way past the age of having children. So, what that tells me... That is why God recognizes Isaac, because of the fact that Isaac shouldn't have existed, but because God says that his word is law, Isaac did exist. How interesting is that? But, true to form, God kept his promise, because we also see this next verse. And also, the son of the bondwoman, I will make a nation, because he is thy seed. But, he's not the primary. So, either way, God keeps his promise. I don't know if I explained it properly. And now we go on to the next verse. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. Now, from what you guys have seen, bottles are not able to be put on your shoulder. Why is it being put on her shoulder? What did the bottle look like? I don't know. What I think might be more accurate to say is that I don't know. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast a child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as if it were a bow shot. So she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, and lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hands, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went, and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad 
drink. Now, how big was this, you know, bottle? Well, the only reason that we have something that's known as a bottle shape now is because that's something that we've been culturally n normalized to. Needless to say, though, The shape only became standardized in recent times. If anything, it may have been more like a knapsack. Just able to hold. You know those sports things that are that you wear like on your back? It's like a backpack for water. That's pretty much what I'm imagining is here. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a, a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Finkel, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee, and all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me, hereby God, that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land where, wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of the well of water, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Rebelech said, I want not who have done this thing. Neither did it, neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech. And both of them made a covenant. And Abraham sent seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Okay, so it's just, just uh, hold on. Uh, then, thus they made a covenant at Beersheba, then Abraham rose. I skipped a couple verses because the Bible series is already out. I'm trying to find the verse where... Yes, here it is. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I tell thee of. Now, we're going to highlight this with a... Um, um, with a green... A dazzling green because this was the build up. Oh, this was the build up. This was the build-up we were getting towards, this entire series. But look at Abraham's reaction. This is another trial. In this...
we see Abraham's conviction. This is a work God sees where he tests Abraham's willingness to obey. This is a son that God had promised Abraham that he's been desiring to have. For, you know, pretty much his whole life, the son that God promised would become a great nation. But we're going to read on. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass. Now, what is an ass? That's another word for a donkey. And took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off, and said unto his young men, Abide he here, ye here, with the ass, and I and the lad shall go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. Then he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. Now, one, I'd really like to point out, Abraham really raised his son well. Because of the simple fact of... Well, I don't think Abraham told his son. Like, there's nothing in here that says that Abraham told his son. Look, we're going to the mountain and we're going to sacrifice you. Then Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is a lamb for a burnt offering? We're going to highlight this. We're going to highlight this with pink. With a hot pink. Because this is a hot topic. This is how I know that Abraham did not tell his son why they went to the mountain. I mean, if seriously, if you were a father, would you tell your son that God told you to kill him, to sacrifice him? That doesn't really make for a good, you know, uh, father-son bonding experience. No, that leads to, um, oh, I got another email. But nevertheless, this is how I know that God didn't tell his son. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry, people. I had a brain fart. Abraham didn't tell his son what God had told him. That one question means that they traveled three days. But it was probably, you know, well taught that Abraham, Abraham's son, was taught by Abraham to, you know, go and sacrifice. Or maybe he, he always used to ask his father, hey, can I go with you? You're going to go sacrifice something. Can I go, can I go with you and learn how to sacrifice? Or maybe Abraham was like, here, come with me, my son. Let us... Let me teach you what God has taught me in worshiping God. You know, something along those lines. So, one of those two scenarios. But, um, and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And they went both of them together. This is actually very interesting to me. And we're going to highlight this in a kind of orangey color. Because of something interesting that this is. This is both Abraham 
trusting in God and silently hoping that he would provide something that he may not have to sacrifice his son He was also, keep on, his son is completely in the dark about what God told him. What, what, what God had told Abraham. Isaac has no idea. He's just like, okay, so we have the wood, we have the fire, we have the knife, and we have a place for sacrificing. What about the lamb? But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So Abraham naturally responds in the best possible way that he can. God will provide a lamb for the offering. He was not only saying that to, you know, ease his son's like, where's the lamb? But also in a way to ease himself. By saying not only to himself, But to his son, God's going to provide a lamb. But he said that not just to convince his son, but to convince himself of that. In a way, trying to hold on to the faith. On to the next verse. And they came to the place which God told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in, in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. By the way, I mean... Can you just imagine a conversation that kind of happened? Where Abraham just says to his son Isaac, Here, lay down and I'm going to bind you up real quick. Can you can you just imagine that, 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 that... They don't put it here in the Bible, and I know why God left it out, because it's probably not... I mean, it would make it less... There had to be a conversation there that God purposely left out because it just... It would lessen the impact of this. I, I, I kind of want to know what that conversation is, though. That... My child, lay down that I may bind you up. But why, father? Why? Just listen to... Or, or it kind of went like... It probably, would, probably went like... My child, lay down that I may bind you. Okay, father. 
but i'm really more inclined because i'm the kind of person that would just be like wait what why 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 are we doing this what's the purpose of this that's my personality i don't know why it's that it just kind of is or like if somebody tells me something that's like really sketchy to me i'll just start being like why why do you need me to do this what's the purpose where am i going hold on is there food why is that always in the top five questions i don't know i'm weird <laughs> But, continuing on. <laughs> and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Seriously. Abraham was pro most likely the entire time in the back of his mind just repeating this one sentence. God's gonna provide a lamb. God's gonna provide a lamb. God's gonna provide a lamb. As, it, as he gets like every every action closer to actually sacrificing his only son that he loves. Actually, let's go back to that. Um, where is it? Take now thy son, thine only son, and that's also why I said that about Isaac and Ishmael earlier. <laughs> because of this particular phrase as well but going back going back to where i was sorry i'm i'm kind of all over the place because i'm getting excited <laughs> i'm also going to raise up my noise cancelling machine because It needs to be raised, because there's also some more background noise in the background. I shall return shortly. And I'm back. I am back now with the, um... then his only son okay so back to what I was saying and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son he's probably saying in the back of his mind God's gonna provide a lamb God's gonna provide a lamb seriously I would honestly be having those thoughts in my head in the back of it just by the just hoping that God would just be like hold on hold on you're proving yourself well. Here is the lamb. You know? And that's actually exactly what happens. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Let's just, let's just, let's just say. Let's just say that like, you know, Abraham... Like, he was, like, right in the middle of getting ready to plunge into his son's uh, stomach to sacrifice, or maybe the chest, to sacrifice his son. And I could just imagine, like, the urgency that, that where God's like, go, my, go, my son. Because keep in mind, the angels are also known as sons of God.
just you know some small we just saying with urgency Abraham Abraham and he said here am I probably also silently saying to himself mentally oh thank God which if some of you actually get what I just said you may now resume your laughter because it's technically not calling God's name in vain when you're thanking God for saving you from a potentially ho- seriously if he actually went through with sacrificing his son do you know how how awkward it would be to sit around his wife I don't think she would ever let him let him live it down just you killed her only son where Abraham's response would be yes but God had told us to he will bring him back yeah, I'm sorry, but that that would not have ended too well. And the angel of the Lord called him. Okay, yeah, so. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Can you imagine the the wave of relief that he must have felt when being told that? I mean, it must have been insurmountable. that just like oh my gosh just like kind of in the back of his mind and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son also there's also another thing that is not mentioned here is the conversation that Abraham may or may not have had with his son on the way back to the camp Just that kind of like just that. I'm really like like there's a lot of conversations that I see that don't aren't written down because they're not technically important at all. But I just I'm really curious to see what some of them would be. Like how would that conversation just kind of go afterwards? Just like, um, what was that about? Why did you almost sacrifice me? And why did an angel of God have to tell you not to do it? Or maybe he understood, like, 
from the phrase. We're gonna highlight that just just for um, highlighting purposes with a nice, really pale pink. Because for all we know, he could have said that out loud, or he, or it could have been like um, because they they can they can speak to you within your mind, which is honestly. Uh, the first couple of times will freak you out. I'm not gonna lie to you, people. It will. You will freak out. Okay. I don't care how tough you may think you are. Something starts speaking in your brain, and you're just gonna go, "Oh, okay. This is how I die." Because you know, I don't know logic. But so yeah, that's probably why we don't see it, or maybe it's not important. I'm just personally curious. You know, I'm curious, like, and I'm sure even like an atheist would be like, "Well, what what happened afterwards?" Well, we see what happened afterwards. Like, the, the Bible has it is uh, actually an acronym: Basic Information Before Leaving Earth. So yeah. You read the whole Bible, you're just going to have the basics. You want the more in-depth stuff, you got to talk to God himself. You can also get information from other beings, but they're not entirely reliable. At all. In fact, God warns against talking to them. And to just trust him, because God is actually incapable of lying as as kind of odd as that may sound God cannot lie. I mean, you can't be the epitome of everything good and lie. Satan, on the other hand, can lie a lot. And not really bat an eye at all, ever. Because that's what he does. Lie. A lot. Sorry, I'm mildly venting. But... And Abraham called the name of that place, Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh, that is, the Lord will see or provide. And that is uh, the trials of Abraham. He has successfully... You know, past his, his trials. And the last one 
And look at his rewards, though. And the angel of the Lord called on Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, of the heaven, and the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? Possessing the gate, of, possess, uh, uh, possessing the gate of your enemies. Really? Really? That that's a normal note. Good gosh. There's also another name for Christians as well, and I'm having a hard... We're going to put that in red. We're going to highlight that in red, because that's going to matter later on. Not in a series, because this is the end of a series, but later on in your Christian walk with God. And even in mine, because, you know, God is awesome. And thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, and in thy seed... Because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she have also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Huz, his first firstborn, and that's spelled H-U-Z, Huz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Kemul, the father of Aram, and Shesed, and Hazel, and Pildash, and Jidlaf, and Bethuel, and Bethuel begat with Beth This is... And whose name was Rumor? Okay. Yeah, no, no. Okay, so that pretty much concludes Abraham's trials. And thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. We're going to highlight that with a classic bright yellow. And you're going to figure that out why we did that. In another series when I can actually find the verse But now let's let's give the the analyzation of the series. This series took an ultimate of four episodes to complete, meaning that the game was very short. There's only really four levels. But each level has ten well each chapter, four chapters, ten levels in each chapter, so there's about forty levels. That's not including the unlimited levels, but those unlimited levels are more of a bonus. Than anything else. Now, how is the gameplay? The gameplay is very responsive, and I found it very easy to control the character. Not just because it's ter oh gosh, it's one of these puzzles. It was a very easy game to control, and I'm able to move at my own pace in the game. Now, do I like fast-paced games? Yes, I do. I kind of like. I really do like them, but I also like games like this. Games that make me have to sit and think and and plan.
the game was actually very fun. I do like the music. It very it kind of makes me feel like I'm in this nice little um nice little fantasy world. Like I I do I do like the music. It's very nice. It's very like it's repetitive, but it's a good kind of repetitive. The game is made by a company known as Nitrome. Now, needless to say, when I first that's also another thing that I want to bring up. There is some things about the game I don't like, but it's also a game that is incredibly Uh, justifiable in its design. Any death that I experienced in a game was 100% actually my fault. Now, unlike other games that are actually just, you know, unfair because for the sake of being unfair, this is not one of them. It's a lot like a Mega Man game or basically any Capcom game. There's not a single Capcom game that I faced so far that I personally would call unfair. In fact, Now, that's different from Sega games. Sega games are fun, they have a great storyline. They're just incredibly broken. Now, is that is that a crime to be a broken game? No, it's not a crime at all. It's just inconvenient. Needless to say, some of my favorite games in the past have been Sega games and Capcom games. So, while people are arguing, hey, which is better for you? Is it Xbox or is it PlayStation? I'm sorry for the voice people. It's, it's, you know, yeah. Xbox or PlayStation? Uh, I'm sorry. Look, I I'm not in teacher mode right now. Now I'm just doing a series review. This game has been very fun, very fair. Which is all I want in a game. I want the game to be fun, fair, and to make me debate chewing on my hands at least once. If it can do that, then it's a decent game. Now for replayability, since this is my second time actually playing the game, I would say yeah, it's pretty replayable. Especially now that there's DLC in a game. Which includes, uh, but it's not limited to.
uh, let's see. The, the music is good. There's only one gripe I really have with the game, and that's just, you know, that's my own personal preferences. Uh, the lack of custom customization in the character, but... Because, you know, personally, I don't like playing as this Viking-type character. Granted, he's a knight. And, you know, but the fact that he's got horns, it just kind of... I don't really care for the horns. But, you know, maybe if, you know, you could change out the, the head a little bit. Maybe if you could actually change out the head of the game... The head of the character in a game, like, so... Oh, it's a Templar helmet. You know, I personally would enjoy that a lot more. But needless to say, I have really enjoyed the game. As far as difficulty curve, it's a Nitrum game. So naturally, the difficulty curve is going to be outrageous to say the least. Well, you see the difficulty in the first couple of levels, and then it just kind of goes up insanely over the course of the next worlds. <laughs> but hey, that's, that's pretty good, though. A game that challenges you to be better with a massive curve. I'm sorry, but, you know, that, that's still pretty good, though. Um, what's another thing I, I like about this game? I do like that you do have a variety of tools you can use at your disposal. From being becoming invisible to explosive arrows that blow stuff up. Or the hammer. I kind of wish the hammer was a little bit more unlimited and you could get it some more in the game. Because I only ever saw it, I think, in the first or second level. And then that's it. I never saw it again. Um, I do like that there's some variety in enemies as well. And the uh, the infinity mode is pretty good. And the infinity mode does introduce a new tool that we didn't really get to see in a game. But using the same concept of having the shield. Of having a key. Which is just, you know, you just walk around with a shield on you. There's two variants of the shield. There's a wooden shield, which is effective, but ultimately... Um, is awful because it's wood and wood catches on fire really easy and it explodes really easily and the other one is a metal shield As far as fun is concerned, 
Yes, the game is fun when you play it in your free time, but when you're playing it to be as serious, you need to be as efficient as possible. It's a tad bit of a um, totally massive hassle to try to beat the game in a timely manner. Um, there are speed runs of the game and walkthroughs, but seriously, pretty much that's what this channel kind of is. You're basically, you're getting two, a two for one. Not only are you getting food for your soul, but you're also getting a nice walkthrough where the game is played pretty much as efficiently as I kind of can muster at the time. With my own little twist and, you know, me doing my own little thing in, you know, whatever game universe the game takes place needless to say I really have enjoyed this series it's, and I do apologize that the finale took me so long to make this is not unlike you know Thumper which is going to be absolutely impossible without the proper equipment same thing for another game that's a Capcom game that I do plan on putting on this channel but Without the proper equipment, there's no way it's ever going to air. Because of the simple fact of... It is going to require so much finesse that you just can't do on a touchscreen. If only Capcom could actually update their game to where it will allow, you know, controllers. But that's my own personal gripe with the company. Needless to say, Capcom is one of my favorite companies in, in gaming, as well as Sega. So, where everyone else is having, here we go with the phrase again, but, Xbox? Or PlayStation? I was more like, hey, which is better, Capcom or, or Sega? And I would just say, well, they each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Capcom is game that has excellent gaming mechanics their games are pretty much n almost n i've never really seen a broken capcom game But this game is the farthest thing from broken. It is very well designed. It has a lot of polish to it. I would say it's very, very good for an app game. And then you have things like, you know, the spear, the axe, and the uh, bow and arrow. The bow and arrow is kind of fun, so is the spear. But I kind of prefer the prefer the, the sword and the hammer. Or the explosive bow and arrow, because you, then you get to blow up the statues that follow you from multiple rooms. But yeah, like, let's say like some more unlockable uh, skins and stuff like that in the game. I personally wouldn't mind that. Because I would, I kind of find that to be kind of cool. You know, getting your own personal, personal skins in the game. Like maybe a Templar skin or a Silver Watchman skin. But uh, the series is over, so I probably won't be returning to this game.
but I have enjoyed this series, to say the least. And I do like in, in the unlimited mode, you can go and you can actually save the villagers. And it's all like, it's all turn-based, so how you move affects how the puzzles go. It's just that, you know, I'm impatient and I try to get through the puzzles as fast as possible. Because, you know, impatience. But this has been an excellent series. One that one that I will remember for a while. And I would like to thank you all for joining me on this. on this uh on this journey to break down the trials of abraham and you know uh much else and if you would like to have a closer relationship with god so you can actually you know sit down and legitimately enjoy what i or other teachers of the lord have to offer then join me in prayer but let me finish reading this verse first for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but who whosoever sh will lose his life for my sake the same shall save it luke chapter 9 verse 24 king james version of the bible and that also kind of co coincides with isaac how does it coincide with him i've run out of time so let us begin our prayer Dear Lord, repeat after everybody, repeat after me. Let me just restart the prayer. Dear Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God, and you are my Savior. I ask that you shall forgive me of all my sins that you shall wash them away with your blood and I also ask that you shall fill me with the Holy Spirit because to you goes the glory to you goes the power and to you goes the honor forever And I thank you for saving my soul from damnation. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you made that prayer in faith, then you should have received what I had received, the Holy Spirit. But you should have received it in the same manner than I have. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now your natural next step would be to go in and confess before man, God. 
demon and angel that Jesus Christ is the Lord and God if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit that is in Galatians chapter 5 verse 25 King James version of the Bible now If you want to learn the basics of walking with God, oh yeah, and you got to receive the baptism of water. That's what it means to confess before. Basically, it's just a big confession before a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of things. That you're acknowledging that Jesus Christ is not only God, but that he's your savior as well. Which is very good to do. If you want to learn the basics of walking with God, you need to check out the... And then I hardly... And then I seriously encourage that you check out the Bible series and the Spirit Root series. Uh, the Bible series will is pretty much, you know, the Bible. It's self-explanatory. And the Spirit Root series basically gives you all the basics of walking with God. And when I say the basics, I mean the bare basics. The more in-depth series, you know, they're going to pop up in the future, but for the time being... You just have the basics. So, nevertheless, glory be to God and blessings be upon every single one of you. This is the Silver Watchman signing out.